Hey, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is actually a requested video. One of the ideas that came in from the couple of times I've said, can you give me some ideas to do some videos? Um, I could go round quite a lot of the um, different um, genera and do this sort of thing, but they don't all lend themselves to it because within some of the genera that I've got, there's a huge variety. I mean, if you specifically take the dendrobiums, out of the ones that I've got, and I certainly haven't got all of them, <laughs> um, there's a variety, you know, and the care and conditions for them are not the same, and yet they live in the same place. Now, I know that sounds daft, but I can still give them different conditions and care in the same place. However, with Restrepias, which is what I'm going to talk about today, they all need the same care virtually across the board. I don't know of any that need different care. So this I can offer out reasonably well, you know, and, and, and not get set somebody off to kill all their plants or anything, which is what I dread doing. I hate offering advice that could be misconstrued, if you see what I mean. Um, now, my belief is that amongst the Plurothalids, these are some of the easiest to look after and possibly some of the more tolerant because although these are nearly all classed as cool growers they tolerate warmth only though if the humidity can be kept reasonably high. Now it is said that ideally Restrepia is like 80% plus humidity all the time and can take humidity heading up towards 100% without any adverse effect. Um, very few people can offer that, but I tell you where you can offer that is in a terrarium or an enclosed, you know, sort of um, showcase type place. Um, a word of warning though, some of the Restrepias as they get older can get pretty big. You know, if you've got a tight little space where you've got a couple of miniature ferns and some moss growing and you put a Restrepia in there, it'll take over the place in some cases, yeah? Um, they're not really uh, a rhizome-based plant. I mean, all, all of the growths are connected to a base, but they don't really have rhizomes in the traditional sense but they are it is a connected plant um, they have a few strange features um, first of all as far as the blooms are concerned they are all similar although there's a wealth of colors and patterns within that shape but your basic shape where's my biggest one let's get one of these round sorry see, it's just easier to focus on a bigger flower than it is a small one Right, let's see if I can get this thing to focus. That's the next job. Okay, something like that then. That is your basic shape of a Restrepia. Yeah? Um, basically three antennae and um, what most people would think of as a lip, but it isn't. <laughs> the lip is the tiny little bit in the middle. Um, yeah? So... Um, that's how it goes. What you've actually got in the true structure of this, if you want to compare it with other orchid structures, which is not the best of ideas with the strepias, is that um, the lip is a little tiny bit in the middle. These are the other two petals, believe it or not, and there are three sepals. This is one, and the other two are normally fused, which, what, which is what gives you the pattern shape at the base. In some Restrepias, they're still split, or the split goes halfway up. But that's the basic structure of the blooms. Um, I mean, if we come over and have a look at this one, this one is partially split at the base. Yeah? So this one has got a slight split at the base. Um, still the basic shape, though. Three antennae, funny little bit in the middle, and the bit with the pattern and the colours on, which is what most people see. Um, so that's that. Um, let me just cancel that autofocus for, uh, function. Um, so there are quite a lot of species and there are a lot of hybrids too. Burnhams themselves have got a lot. Um, so, you know, if you decided I'm going to have a little collection of Restrepias, Burnhams is not a bad place to start. They don't 
put all of them on their website, if I remember rightly. But if you're there, you'll suddenly sort of think, oh, they've got an awful lot more than it says on the website. That's just how it goes. Um, you know, it, it takes a fair bit to update the website, basically. So, uh, right. So I've... I've had more than this in the past, but some have been passed on to others. And some of mine look a bit tatty at the moment. And this one, for instance, looks a bit tatty at the moment. And the reason is it's got some old leaves that faded when it was repotted. They took the opportunity to fade. But then it has lots of new ones coming as well. And with Restrepias, not all, but most, the bloom comes out from underneath the leaf there yeah and on some restrepias it'll do it over and over again and after each bloom goes over it, you get left with a tatty little spindly bit and if you don't trim them off the plant starts to look quite tatty <laughs> um, if you give them a tidy up it brings them back to life again um, so top part of the plant, um, the two at the back of the large ones, those are the two I've had the longest. They both came from Burnham's. Um, this is Falkenbergii species, also has my smallest bloom. I doubt if I'll be able to focus on that one because they really are small. Let's see what this camera can do. So it won't let me cancel at the moment. Let me just come up. Thank you. Then we can start again. Touch the plant. Right, that should be reasonably in focus. Um, small, very pretty little blooms on this one. Um, lovely delicate stripes, which the camera tries to merge into one. But um, lovely colours, lovely stripes. Um, one of the first I ever got. And um, this is um, not a bad plant because it it didn't object to being repotted, which some of the others have. Um, what it does do, as do a lot of um, restrepias, is grow kikis. So where the blooms come out from the base of a leaf, sometimes they push out new plants. And they will, you know, form some little delicate roots. Um, you can take them off and pot them up. Um, I mean, I found they, they get going a bit better and a bit quicker if you just stand them in some moss till they get some roots going of their own. Um, some of the restrepias, those kikis underneath the leaf, will actually grow some roots that you can see before you take them off. Um, either way. Um, but this one doesn't crinkle very often. Most of the new growths on this one come out clean. Yeah, there was another bloom tucked under there. <laughs> see that one uh, yeah so oh no that is the one we filmed I turned it didn't I just the one on this plant um, they don't tend to have a seasonal blooming they tend to bloom on and off when they flip in like um, they have let's see if this one will lift out yes it will they have very very fine root systems they will root shallow if you want to put them in a shallow container if you put them in a deeper container they will use it they can produce quite extensive root systems. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's a good test to find out if your roots have taken to the pot well, is lift the plant up. Unfortunately, if it hasn't, then all your, you know, your plant will come out and all your media goes over the floor. So it's not the best of ideas. Um, that was just to get it out of the black pot. And I know I'm safe to do it with this one because it's been in the pot a while. Not enough to need repotting yet. But if you look on there, look how many blooms that leaf has had. Yeah? What have we got there? One, two, three, four, six, seven. So it just blooms continuously, but it's what I call on and off. It doesn't very often have a mass blooming of any kind. Um, but sometimes there'll be five or six blooms out at the same time. So that's that one. And then this is my worst one. This one did object to being repotted and has taken a while to recover. And the sure sign of a restrepia that's not hydrating properly is crinkled leaves it's this yeah and unfortunately this is still happening on some of my new growths so it's still not hydrating properly it's still not happy and it's never really been that happy since it was repotted and unfortunately it was when it lost 
a lot of its root system. It did just didn't take kindly to it. Um, I'll have to get a label out for this one because I can never remember what it is. It is Antennifera. Antennifera, sorry. And it's the variety Hemsleyana. Um, I think uh, Burnham's have got several Antennifera varieties. Um, but this is a rather large fleshy leaved Ristrepia, this one. And this is the one that really did not take kindly to being repotted. Um, it has actually taken to its pot now. I can lift it up. But it just still keeps pushing out um, these leaves. So if the root system is now okay, which it probably is if I can lift it up, you know, by the plant, then the reason this is still doing this is the humidity is not high enough. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's just... Hydration in the plants for these is either based on the humidity around it and or the roots. It's a combination. So until these new growths start opening up clean, and then they would look like this, or similar to that, then it's still not happy. But it is pushing up an awful lot of new growths. They're just not opening clean. Which for that one probably means the humidity is not quite high enough for that particular species. Um, that's that one. Right, as far as this one is concerned, this is a, um, a hybrid that came from the Eric Young Foundation. Um, has my largest flowers by far. And again, it just keeps going. Now this looks a tatty plant because it needs the ends tidied and it needs the old dead leaves trimmed off. And that will leave the brighter coloured leaves. Yeah? And, and the blooms. Um, I say blooms on this are quite large and um, very attractive again but um, I got this really um, my friend Peter White had a whole tray full of these um, all with French names um, and, I mean this is how Lisset and um, they'd all come from the Eric Young Foundation and plants don't escape out of there very often <laughs> um, and um, how he got a couple of tray full, I'm not quite sure, but then he is in the trade as such. So, um, but yeah, so I grabbed a couple. Somebody else has got the other one that I had. Um, that went off in the, I think it was in the last lot of plants ago. It may have even been earlier than that. But I haven't had this one a huge amount of time, which is why it's not quite such a big plant. This has been recently repotted and still hasn't recovered its root system, um, which is why a few of the leaves are getting a bit manky but it is still producing new ones so it's sort of half half recovered and half not and then this is my latest one this came from burnham's and although this has got a species name it's not um because it's it's capria but it's actually a hybrid but the fact that it just says restrepia capria hybrid it probably means that one of the parents is unknown or there is uncertainty about it. That's the probable answer there. So this is my newest one. I got this at, um, last year with part, part of my birthday voucher money. Um, and I got this one. Well, firstly, I was finding things to spend the money on that I liked the look of. And I did like the look of this one because of the, um, the split here. It made it different, and the deep red velvety colour round, round the edge, which I liked a lot. So, um, yeah, only the four. I, I don't plan on getting any more. Um, that, that'll do me. So the main traits of these are they really do like the high humidity, and if I get plants that suffer a little bit, you know, because they haven't got the humidity as high as they like, you can see what I mean. Bearing in mind my humidity out here rarely drops below 75 and certainly overnight is nearer 100. Um, so, you know, but it, as I said, it can be that sometimes with the heat, um, the roots can't take up enough moisture to hydrate the leaves in the manner which they should be. Um, that would be the drop in temperature would achieve that and or an increase in humidity would achieve that. I'm doing what I can. <laughs> um, but as you see, once you start getting into some of the hybrids, um, this one's happy. 
in, in these conditions, it's not showing any signs of distress. So um, it does vary. So I think the best thing I can say with these is repot with caution. Um, as far as what you grow them in is concerned, I never tell somebody what media to use. But you have to bear in mind these should not dry out. With a tiny fine root system like that, they should not dry. You know, OK, you can let them get almost dry, but they shouldn't dry out. Um, for anything than the shortest amount of time and I would suggest that they don't dry out completely ever they're not that type of plant so it's one of those evenly moist things which is impossible <laughs> you give it a watering and it's soaking wet and then it heads towards dryness just don't let it quite get there and that'll do that'll suit them they're not high feeders they don't need a lot of feed like most of the plurophthalids low feed levels and not too often they don't they don't need it um, cloud forest environment is where they come from so cool high humidity and some airflow and, and they should do fine but the media needs to reflect the nature in which they grow so very very fine root system they're probably not going to do very well in chunky bark, are they? You just have to use a bit, of, use your loaf a bit when you're sort of working things like this through. So very, very fine root system is going to need some sort of fine media. Now, depending on your conditions, these will grow in sphagnum moss, happily, as long as you don't let the moss go off. Yeah. So, and also, if you pot them in sphagnum moss, repotting them is quite easy because you can just run them under the blinking tap and wash most of the moss off. And be careful with the roots. You know, they're very, it's a very fine root system. Don't bash them around when you repot them. Treat them very gently. Because if they bruise, they will often die at that point, and then you lose half of that root, if you see what I mean. It's a very, very branching root system, so they will recover relatively quickly. But basically, you can pot these in anything that retains moisture to a degree and is a fine media. So moss will do it. You can chuck bits in with your moss if you want. Small bark, um, pieces of, small pieces of charcoal, perlite, um, the various things. It doesn't matter a huge amount what you pop them in as long as it doesn't dry out completely and is a reasonably fine media to accommodate that, that fine root system. If there's loads of huge air gaps in there, some of those roots are gonna get in those air gaps, they're gonna die, because they're not in contact. It's a sort of media that needs to have pretty close contact with the root system, and then they'll be okay. Um, they don't need highlight. Uh, again, it's plurothalids tend to come from cool, shady, montane forests, so um, they're not highlight lovers. Um, they certainly don't need high light to bloom, like so you, you venture off into some of the Mazda values, if they don't get enough light they won't bloom, they might grow nicely, with lovely nice shiny green leaves but no blooms, and they need a bit extra. Restrepias don't seem to come into that category, they're quite happy in, in quite shady conditions, and, and they will still bloom under those conditions. Um, and, and that's about it really, temperatures, you know, like most plurothalids, on the cooler side. Um, and if you, if you can't keep them as cool as they would like, then you need to up the humidity to keep them hydrated and stop this happening. Yeah, I'll get this one back again. It's vigorous enough that I'll get there. You know, I mean, some of the new leaves have opened up almost properly. That's about the only one I can find that really has opened properly. So it's getting there. But it's still pushing up some that aren't opening very well. So, uh, And this could be that my watering frequency through the winter time has actually let that one dry a bit. Now, it wouldn't have been between one watering and the next one. What it would be would, between, would be I watered it, and then next time, like 10 days' time or whatever, I picked it up and thought, oh, that's still wet, that can wait till next time. And next time was that little bit too long. Could be that, yeah. So don't let them go totally dry. So, I mean, they are pretty easy going, really. But you know, you've just got to 
consider can I give these enough humidity to keep them really happy and thriving because without it they're struggling they might not even show that they're struggling but they are and that probably means they're not going to produce leaves as big as they ought to be um, not going to produce as many new growths as perhaps they ought to they may not bloom as often because the strength isn't there but if you get these things in the right conditions they really can grow on they can push on like weeds um, these large plants at the back are probably five years old now and they started smaller than this they started as little tiny plants with about five leaves on so you know they, they will push on and become quite big plants so uh, that's Restrepias. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you have conditions that you think are suitable, give them a go. But not everybody likes the blooms. Um, you know, there are some people that really don't like the blooms. Some, some people think they look so much like bugs, they don't want them in their grow space. <laughs> and they do have a, a bug-like look, I suppose you could say that. Um, or an alien-type look. But I, f I find them attractive, I must admit. Um, but most, you know, th this would be considered a large bloom for a Restrepia. That would be considered large. Um, many, you know, go down, I mean, that's, that's my largest bloom. Then it goes down to this one is medium. And then this tiny little one at the back is small. But then that is a species, these two at the front are hybrids. So, uh, so there we go. That's my that's my four. I think the most I've ever had is five or six. I've never had a huge number of them, and I don't plan on getting any more unless like this one. I happen to be at Burnham's, and a particular bloom catches my eye. Um, in which case, I might get another one. I've got the space for these types of plants because they don't like the high light. I don't need to worry about them having to go on a high shelf. So I've got that sort of space, so I could take another one quite easily, or another couple. And we might be going to Burnham's in the not-too-distant future. Who knows what I'll come back with. <laughs> I'm not going to come back empty-handed, am I? But I'm also not coming back with a flipping bootful in the car, you know. Uh, I will have some token new plants, so uh, we'll see how we go. And I'll see you next time.